Okay. So, um, so Christian leadership, um, that's the topic. Um, you know, leadership is, uh, is a very fast topic. Um, but um, we are going to focus on certain aspects of leadership. And uh, like the title of the subject, it's Christian leadership. So how um, leadership, uh, the what of leadership uh, in Christian ministry as a Christian leader, as a follower of Christ, um, we're going to be looking at all those aspects. So it's uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, it's 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 quite practical. Um, and uh, but I must also say that uh, you know some aspects of this, um, it will, you know, find better traction, or in the sense uh, we'll be able to grasp it better um, when we actually come to those places of putting it, being able to put it to practice, right? Uh, because some of this could be just mere theory. Let's say, for example, if you're not leading a team, and then uh, we are talking about you know how to lead a team and uh, you know, resolving conflicts in a team, etc. You know, so uh, those uh, those things may not be, uh, you know, we may not be able to have a very tight grasp of it. But but I'm sure that uh, you know th these things will be uh, really valuable, right? So um, yeah, so let's start right away. So we are going to be looking at uh, three sections. Okay, uh, the resource, the the notes, class notes are uploaded already uh, in that class work section. So you can download that and e-learning students uh, it'll be there in the resource section you can download that as well um okay so we're going to have three sections for this particular uh, topic uh, we look at the introduction what leadership is what the term actually means if there are any misconceptions about leadership you know, we'll kind of address that. Then we go to section one, which is leading through time, which is uh, going to be pretty interesting. Um, and then uh, we're going to look at uh, the Lord Jesus as a leader. What did he do and how what we can learn from his life and leadership? Uh, the se second section is about uh, people. You know, we, we, we understand that we cannot lead in a vacuum, right? It's going to be with people. Uh, we're going to be leading people, working with people. So, um, you know, how do we win with people? You know, winning with people. Um, that's the second section. And the third one is about teamwork. You know, how do we work together as a team? So there are certain dynamics um, that we will encounter as a as a team uh, and as a, someone who's leading a team. So uh, we're going to be addressing that as well. So, um, so it is a... a you know, so these are we are restricting ourselves um, uh, when we look at this topic, Christian leadership, to these um, you know, broad categories, right? And within that, of course, there are some practical things that we will uh, touch upon as well. Okay, so um, so just wanted to understand, you know, from each of us, uh, you know, the the picture. Uh, what picture do you get? when you hear the word leader or leadership? You know, is it a positive picture? Is it a negative picture? Um, what is it that comes to your mind when you hear the term uh, leader or leadership? Um, maybe we'll just take two minutes to talk about that. Anyone, you can either put it on the chat or you can unmute and you know share. What is it? that comes to your mind first and foremost when you hear the word leader or leadership. Um, uh, Divya, welcome back. So probably, Divya, you can start. Uh, Thank, you. Yeah, Thank you. Master. Glad to be back. Uh, yes, uh, I was just typing in, actually. So. Uh, okay. Uh, when we say leaders, some uh, some great leaders come to my mind actually, uh, like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, for example. Mm, and I was also thinking of Moses in the Bible, uh, leading a multitude of people uh, through such a long distance. Uh, yeah, so yeah, there are positive uh, leaderships that we do see throughout in history. And um, 
those uh, such kind of leaders are uh, you know remembered uh, for mm -hmm. their exemplary leadership so it's good to even jesus christ yeah it's so it is good to really uh, look at them and uh, see what they did differently right yeah. right so you mentioned two names mahatma gandhi and uh... You know, and Moses, and uh, uh, obviously people who brought about change, right? A lot of change, uh, who impacted uh, a, a group of people, and um, yeah, interesting that you should mention. You know, two very, uh, I don't know, different uh, styles of leadership. If you, you know, if you'd like to do a case study on each of these personalities, right? Thank you. Um, Okay, so Rosalind says, one who sets an example for others to follow. Okay. Um, and also, leaders can be negative or positive. That's right. Uh, John Paul, a very positive picture, uh, uh, walks with people in their thick and thin to reach the vision and goal. Okay, one who's with people, who not only really shows the um, destination, that's what you know john is saying that not only shows but also walks with them in order to reach the vision and goal okay so jeffina you put your hand up uh, you want to share something yes pastor yeah. uh, i remember a sermon by dr miles about uh, leadership i think la in the last semester pastor paul actually suggested to okay. hear the sermon so yeah so he used to say that uh, leadership is uh, finding who we are and giving it for the people. So we have to find who we are in Christ and what we are created for our purpose. And this, we just have to uh, give it and just serve others. Uh, so this is one of the best explanation that I have ever heard. Uh, and it really touched me and changed me because uh, he actually uh, gave the illustration of Jesus also. In that uh, He used to say that Jesus came as the son of God and he gave his life. He right. gave his life as a ransom. So he he knew he's the son of God and he knew who he is. And he just gave himself as a offering. Uh, he just served by giving himself. So this is something that I want. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, that's a very interesting uh, definition. You find out uh, in finding out who you are, like it means your call, your purpose, your gifting. And then you steward that to others. Wonderful. Um, success, you have um, something to say? Good morning, Happy New Year for everyone. Good morning. A leader is a vision deliverer. Mm. Someone who can deliver a vision. We have rulers and we have leaders. Leaders are not many, are not much. But a leader mm. is the one who will carry everybody along and show them the pathway positively. If we look at Moses as example, Moses was a leader. He hand over to Joshua who was a leader. Elisha was a leader. David was a leader. Right. A leader always inquire from the Lord mm. in context of where should we go? What the next? But a ruler can rule. Look at Solomon as a case study. Solomon was a leader. So a leader will lead his people right. Mm. And everybody will benefit. Praise God. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, success. Uh, Lubega, you want to share something? To me, I will start on uh, the, the... I think leadership is all about doing good. So I will start by saying that a leader is a person who gets a God-given vision. Number two, he identifies people who is going to go with along, provides necessary training, tools, and then gives them time to achieve a desired goal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, so much, uh, so many different facets, uh, uh, you know, characteristics for a leader uh, and the leadership itself um and uh, so we, we we really understand that uh, you know leadership uh, is not really about titles or positions right 
one comes to an understanding that um, hey, it's, it's not about, yes, of course, there is that formal uh, authority or formal leadership that is vested on a person you know, for a particular role. For example, you join a company, you are given a title, and uh, that, that title gives some description about the role and the function. And uh, therefore, you are expected to be uh, a leader within the scope of that role and function and carry out the responsibility. So that's a there's a formal authority um, that is vested, right? a title which is given uh, as a leader. Uh, while that is also true, but we also understand that one need not have a title, why one need not have uh, an official position in an organization to be a leader, right? Um, and it's very important for us to understand that because, um, you know, when we look at the term leader or leadership, um, we can either identify, you know, identify with that, uh, we can either approve ourse ourselves or say, okay, I agree uh, with that. And also, you know, personally uh, at a place we say, we can either disqualify ourselves and say, okay, I don't have these, you know, whatever you describe right now, okay, taking people, uh, vision, delivering vision, one who sets an example, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, one who walks with people, and, and then you realize that, okay, I, I don't have all this. So I, you know, uh, so you you know one one tends to disqualify, right? Okay, let's say uh, you you might say okay I'm not working, or I'm uh, I, I'm a homemaker, you know, I, or I'm retired. Um, so so therefore uh, you know I'm not a leader, and and so you know whatever we look at in the course um, does not apply, or uh, you know uh, it's uh, it's it's just going to be theoretical knowledge, right? Sometimes we might come to that conclusion because we dis disqualify ourselves and say okay i'm i'm not a leader uh, but the more we look at um uh, leadership the more we look at uh, you know even uh, into the word of god we see that uh, well leadership is not quite that okay we see that leadership simply put you know like john maxwell says john c maxwell uh, we, we referred to John C. Maxwell um, a few times in the past, um, uh, uh, a Christian leader, a pastor uh, of a church, and then God moved him into this aspect of, um, you know, meetings and uh, authoring books uh, on management, on leadership, um, people skills, etc. Right. Um, so he says that leadership is influence. Leadership is influence. If we are not able to positively influence someone else, okay, or a, or a bunch of people, or a group of people, um, then there is no question of uh, them wanting to follow or wanting to do something together, right, or reaching a goal together. Um, so, a very important aspect. Uh, of leadership, excuse me, is influence. So we can, uh, so John C. Maxwell repeatedly says, you know, leadership is influence. If you look at all the leaders uh, uh, who have who have marked history, uh, we see that they have this important quality of influence, influencing the thoughts, influencing the lives, um, influencing the transformation, so many things, um, bringing about change, uh, Maybe social good, uh, an uprising, maybe to change something, uh, injustice, right? Uh, or as you look into the Word of God, you know we see that um, okay, carrying out the mandate, or bringing about uh, God's plans and purposes, and um, into you know, in, on the earth, we see that one of the things is influence. Like a big thing is influence. So it's it's about uh, if you if you would want to you know describe or uh, define leadership, uh, we would say that okay, it is about being an influence for good. Okay, let me just put that. It's there in your notes, uh, but let me just put it on the chat again. Uh, so leadership is about. Let's see. 
about being an influence for good in people's lives. Okay, an influence for good, like um, Rosalind said, uh, leadership can be uh, a negative influence. It can be a positive thing. Leaders can be negative. Leaders can be positive. Leaders can bring about a lot of you know, a, a change which is negative or a change that is good, right? So it's about being an influence for good. So when we, when we talk about Christian leadership, it's about being an influence for the good of people, right? So bring about change in thinking, in behavior, and helping that individual or uh, a group to reach, to accomplish their goals. So it's about being an influence for good, always for the betterment. Um, so that is what you know we can consider as good leadership. So it's about being an influence for good in people's lives, which we see that in all the examples or the people that you quoted, uh, you stated, being an influence for good. Good for what? To bring about change, right? To bring about change in um, in people's uh, thinking, in their behavior, in whatever they are doing, so that there is transformation and come to a place of accomplishing certain things, individual accomplishments or collective uh, accomplishment. So simply put, you know, we say leadership is influence. Okay. The second thing that we need to understand is uh, Okay, we look at maybe our present situation, present condition, and and uh, kind of like I said, we can say, okay, this is what I'm doing, so I am a leader, or this is what I've been asked to do, I've been given this title, so therefore I consider myself a leader. Or we could say, I don't have all these things, I don't think I have influence, I don't think I am in really bringing about change in people's lives, so therefore, you know, I'm I'm not serving anyone, I'm not doing that, so I'm not a leader. We tend to disqualify, or we could even look at, you know, the whole, uh, you know, the world outside and say, okay, leadership is for that person, for that person, A, B, C, uh, but it's not for me. Right? I'm an individual. I tend to work with, you know, work uh, uh, by myself or do things by myself um, on my own. So, you know, I am not a leader. Um, but the the interesting thing, the truth is that leadership, this quality or this gift, uh, this characteristic of leadership, is for everyone. Okay, so we're going to look at a few scriptures uh, which really uh, 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 highlight this truth that leadership is indeed not for a selective few. We could be leaders um, in different realms, right? irrespective of what we are, what we are, because it's about influence. Right? We are influencing some, always influencing some people for the good or for the bad, and uh, intentionally we could be doing it unintentionally. So we see that leadership is actually for all. Okay, while we know that it can be a specific thing, you know, it can be a specific call. Like you described Moses, you know, there was a specific call. Moses, you will go, you will deliver my people uh, from their bondage. He was called to do that. A, you know, he's, uh, we could say he was officially given that title and position by the Lord. If you look at um, um, the fivefold ministry, we see that, yes, you know, God calls some people and uh, they have been called to do certain things and in the body of Christ. Um, and uh, we see all that happening. So um, so we know that, okay, there is a certain call, there is a certain official position. You look at, uh, uh, just one second, sorry. Um, I think um, yeah, so if we look at, um, uh, uh, let's say Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verses 5 to 8. Okay, let's uh, maybe uh, somebody can read Romans chapter 12, verses 5 to 8.
Anyone? Romans chapter 12, verse 5 to 8. So we being many or one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophecy in proportion to our faith or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberally, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Yeah. So um, verses 5 and 8 talk about, okay, in the body of Christ, uh, you know, we are one body and then we are different members, um, individually members, and we all have different gifts according to the grace of God, according to the call of God. So, um, the, so the instruction is, okay, as you have received these gifts, you use it. Okay, if it's prophecy, you prophesy in proportion to your faith. If it's ministry, serving, you serve. Um, and if you're teaching, you teach. Uh, if you're exhorting, you you know, do that, etc. And then it also, if you if you notice in verse uh, eight, it says, "He who leads with diligence." So we see that okay, there is a gifting, and it's a it's a grace uh, which is given for people uh, for different people who are members of the body of Christ. Okay, so we so we understand that okay, the fivefold could be there or a membership gift of those who are in the body of Christ, or maybe it's a specific thing that people have been called to do. Yes, we understand that. But being followers of the Lord Jesus, okay, each one of us, we are followers of the Lord, we are called by the Lord, and we've been commissioned by the Lord. Okay. Now that includes everyone. That includes everyone who calls himself or herself a follower of the Lord Jesus, a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Right? For each and every person who says, okay, I, I've accepted the Lord, and I'm I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus, and the Lord calls and commissions. Okay, so we see this in the Great Commission, like Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Um, Matthew 28, 28 and verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, "All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them." in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Okay, so he spoke, the Lord gave this instruction, this commission to the disciples, and this is what he tells them. All authority has been given, so therefore, you know, you go, you make disciples. Uh, you make followers of Christ. Okay, you teach them, you baptize them, you teach them, uh, teach them to observe all the things that I've told you. Now, now, how is that possible without, you know, without, of course, the basic things like relationship and influence and so on, um, without the supernatural? How is that possible? But the fact is that this particular commission is for everyone who calls himself or herself a, a believer, a follower of the Lord Jesus. Right? So the Lord is saying, okay, go, you do this. So if you look at it, you see that each person is actually called to influence someone else. Right? As believers, each of us, all of us, we are called to influence someone else for the sake of the kingdom, for sake of the fact that Lord has called us to share the gospel, to win them over, to uh, enable them to follow Christ, right? to teach them uh, to that end. Okay. So we see that uh, yeah, each of us have been called to influence at least one other person. Okay. And when we know, when we consider that, okay, leadership is influence, and each of us has been called to influence, maybe, you know, the, the call differs, right? Some of us could be called to just influence individuals, you know, one person at a time, maybe, or maybe it's a group of individuals, and maybe it's thousands, hundreds, thousands, whatever. But the fact is, each of us have been called to influence, right? Go make disciples. Go share the truth. Uh, teach them to follow Christ. 
So, so each of us have been given uh, that authority. You know, he says, "I give that to you, so that you will go and do it." So, he says, each of us have been commissioned to be uh, disciples, uh, to be soul winners. Uh, in other words, each of us have been called, have been given uh, influence. Each of us have been called to be leaders. Okay, so logically, if you look at it, all of us are called to be leaders. The problem is this, you know, we have a picture of leadership, we have an understanding of leadership, maybe uh, we have uh, our understanding is about titles, positions, maybe our understanding is about leadership in, uh, in an organization, right? a formal leadership. And then we say, okay, I'm not a leader, or you don't really take that seriously. Right, but the fact is that when we look at this, when we look at our Great Commission, we see that each of us, all of us, have been called to a position of leadership. Okay, so now, you know, we can we can consider each, having considered each of us as leaders, you know, we can go forth and we can look at, okay, this is something that I need to take seriously. Okay, this is something that I need to develop. Okay. Um, uh, maybe we might have a uh, uh, we might have a different picture of leadership. Right? I need to tell people what to do. Maybe you know. Uh, I think it was uh, success who you know talked about rulers and leaders, and uh, maybe we have a, that kind of a you know picture of leadership. I need to be able to tell people you know, all the time what to do, what not to be done, uh, instruction, etc. Now you know putting that aside. If you look at how Christ has called us, each one of us, to influence. You know, when we look at leadership as influence, have you been called to influence someone? And you ask yourself that question. Have I been called to influence someone? Of course. Yeah. So I am called to be a leader. But what am I doing in terms of you know influencing others? You know, you might say, okay, I, I'm at I'm at home. Uh, or I'm I'm in the workplace. Uh, I'm morning to evening, I'm just doing this, or I'm in business and I'm just doing this. But look at the people that you are connected with. Like look at the people who are connected to you, whom you interact with, right? Um, recently, I was just reading about uh, Susanna uh, Wesley, you know, the mother of John Wesley, um, mother of, you know, this is, a, this is a big family, I think almost some 19 children. And, uh, but it is said that she always found time to give individual attention to the children and to teach them the word of God and to motivate them in the ways of God. And we know that John Wesley and Charles Wesley and uh, you know the brothers, how they uh, took the gospel you know, to the streets, literally. And they took it to the streets and uh, so much of reformation and change, uh, revival, they brought about from that formal, um, you know, religious kind of a setting. They they really made the gospel, the word of God, and the songs uh, they sang. You know, literally to thousands, right? Um, and it was and changed continents, and God used them mightily. And we can trace back and say, okay, there were many many influence many people or many factors that God used, but we also know that God used Susanna, William, Susanna Wesley um, in the early day, days and years to lay that foundation, to influence them uh, very powerfully, um, to lay those seeds in their lives. Right? So we can never take those things for granted. We could never, we can never, you know, brush those things aside and say, okay, it's 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 nothing. But all these things matter. Right? It is leadership. And right? it is about influence. So we look at the lives that we are connected with. Right? Maybe our understanding is okay, I need to be doing this, I need to be, you know, uh, looking at uh, formal things. You know, that is important, of course. You know, that God calls us into that settings as well, but this is also something not to be neglected, right? So um, all of us uh, are called to be leadership, to leadership, sorry, and uh, leadership is for all. Okay, so um, we'll we'll uh, uh, when we come back after the break, we'll 
we look at, uh, we'll get into section one and uh, we look at how did the Lord Jesus model leadership? Okay, so in his life and ministry, he did certain things uh, which were revolutionary and ra so, so very radical, uh, a very paradigm shift, you know, like a drastic change in the way the world would look at leadership. Right? He brought about that kind of a change and uh, the, the way he modeled it. So uh, we're going to be looking at that uh, when we come back after the break. So we'll take a 10-minute break. We'll come back by uh, 10 a.m., right? Okay. Thank you.